Hi there, everybody. Casey Edwards here with the next installment in the Aleatoric Modular series, French Horns. Now, as you'll immediately see here, Horns A, Horns B. We decided to record Divisi Horns here uh, in most of our articulations to give you a lot of section control in the end and more variation in the sound. So we stuck with six French horn players. Horns A is going to be horn players one through three and horns B is going to be horns four through six. This means that you can double up on the same articulation or blend with others, play whatever you want. Let's go ahead and dive in so you can get an idea of the sound. We'll start with horns A lip bends here. Now as you can see that was just one note, went straight to middle C there. Uh, we highly suggest that you experiment with multiple notes on one patch. It's scripted in such a way that the aleatoric nature of the samples can be done even if you hit the same note over and over again, you're going to get a new start time. Now you can control that here in the random start time part of the options GUI. If you want it to start at the beginning every time, you have that option. I suggest you keep it up to 100%. All right. Also, you'll notice by default, the DECA and Outrigger mics load on all the patches. All right, now I want you to hear the same thing with Horns B. Now let's join them together. This time I'm just going to play one note. Now to me, the really cool thing about this is if you want the full six horns, you know, just join them up here, track one and two, set it up to play at the same time or make them under the same channel. But regardless, since they are different sized uh, loops, different loop points, whenever you push a button, not only do you get the different length of variation, but you get the different start time as part of the aleatoric scripting involved. And to me, that's really cool. So even when you hit play again after recording the MIDI data, you're going to get a different performance. So there's a true aleatoric nature to the scripting here, plus real-time control. If you want it to swell over 8 bars, 16 bars, sit down at the bottom for 3,200 bars, you can do whatever you want. You know, really looking forward to moving into the future here for controllable aleatoric effects when applicable. All right, let's play around a little bit more here. By the way, I have a very small send on some SoCal Spaces brass front, as well as a little roll off on the low end. I'll give you a naked mic demo in one moment.
right, cool. Let's move on to the next articulation. Flutter bends. Same concept as a lip bend, but you get the nasty flutter. Awesome. All right, let's move on. Trills. Again, that is just one note. Highly suggest you experiment with more than one with the way that these were recorded, and purposefully so. Solo some of these again so you can hear just horns A trills. trills <laughs> sorry about that let's try that again horn b trills Flurries. The idea behind this was when I was listening to Elliot Goldenthal's score for, I think, Batman Forever. In the main titles of that, there's these rips, but they're combined with these, these runs, just scurrying up real high. I didn't want to capture that exact moment, but I wanted to capture that chaos. I wanted to capture something similar but slightly different. I'll let you listen. I told the players to scurry around within a certain cluster so that we could map it out for sampling purposes, but to kind of mix up between trills, runs, and rips, all in the same patch. So it's like a flurry of notes, and it sounds like this. Yeah, those are absolutely a blast to play. And I can definitely say, as fun as this stuff is to play, it's just as fun to record, and the players always have an absolute blast. All right, let's move on to the jitters. These are 
staccato burst recorded to be higher intensity as the dynamic goes higher as well again for the purpose of being able to play multiple notes on the keyboard to take advantage of the aleatoric scripting sounds like this And while we're on jitters, it's a more poignant sound, a very, you know, a lot of point to it because of the staccato. Let's go ahead and go over the mics. Let's turn off everything. It'll give you a naked demo. All right. Let's start with the close mics. It's exactly what it says it is. Close mic. All right. And it sounds like this. It's going to give you a lot of that concentrated clarity, you know, right up in front of the player. Decca. Now, I think the outriggers were my favorite mics in the low brass, but the Decca definitely are my favorite for the French horns. They sound like this. And for those that don't know, a decatree array is basically the conductor's perspective in sound. So you get the depth of the room and the placement of the player. Now, outrigger, it's basically an extended deca. You get the deca extended to the very far left and right of the room, so you get a lot of width. They sound like this. All right, and then we have the balcony mics. Now this time we experimented with mixing in a room mic with the balcony mics. Usually you would get a whole lot of ambient, but because of the nature of this hall, it's very punchy, it's very dry, and it sort of gives you a different sound, but not a bad, just check it out. It almost sounds like a close mic, but not really. You're getting a lot of that, that point, a lot of highs in there especially. And I think that's because you're getting the, almost like a surround mic. It's almost like you're getting the back of the hall perspective from the players. All right, let's go ahead and add this reverb back on. Moving along. All right, to this cluster split patch here. I'll explain this again. Uh, we have the same concept in the low brass, but it starts out with a basic sustain layer.
All right, and then, by the way, you can assign these CC controllers to any ones that you would like. Right now, I just have it set to my current controller configuration. Now, the concept behind this was to be able to control deviations from the sustain, either by having them play from their sample start position like this, or fading them in however you'd like. So say you're playing, you know, a minor chord. Then you can bring in the deviations whenever you feel like it. Now I suggest if you're going to do it with chords, you use this extension layer. And what that is is you hit activate and then you get a duplicate of the deviations, but you get to control their pitch variation using these choices here uh, as far as how far the pitch bend is going to go. I definitely suggest not going up this high, but it's there just in case you want to play around. I usually like to stick it around minor third and below, but choose a major second. So if you're going to play a chord, bring in the deviation. And then now I'm going to start playing with the extension. Let me exaggerate that so you can hear exactly what it's doing. Now obviously you would never do that. But listen for the slight waver in sound. Now the samples already have pitch been done. Let me go ahead and play them separately so you can hear. Let's try that again. Here is the extension. Sort of exaggerating it here and there so you can hear it, but you can control the waiver and it's really cool. All right. And also, we have a breakout sustains patch if all you want is the sustains. Not that this is a huge patch or anything, but, you know, just in case you want just sustains. You can always feel free to play just the sustains in this patch as well. And I think they sound so warm. Very, very nice. take you to our last patch here risers and falls the way this works is CC2 gives you the choice to handle the time machine pro by the way we we do give contact 4 and contact 5 patches for all of the AMS series releases but I highly suggest when you get to the risers and falls patch to use the K5 I've noticed Time Machine 2 in Contact 4 can leave some, some really nasty artifacts in the sound, and Contact 5's much superior time-stretching algorithm handles it very well. Now, this isn't really for 
you just to experiment with. I mean, yeah, you can have some fun by doing some half stretches, you know. It doesn't sound completely terrible. But mainly what it is is to control tempo variance in the craziness that is aleatoric music. And I know some people like to divide their their 30-second notes into a higher tempo, so it's 16th. So you'll have like a 220 BPM. And when you crank that up and, you know, time machines read that, you get really fast, you know, rips and falls. And since these are time synced, that may not be what you want. So, you know, just cut that sucker in half and you're good to go. Or say you have a really slow tempo at like 60 or 72 and you have a build up, you know, and the the tempo sync isn't working how you want, you know, double it up. It'll get it closer to the original tempo recording, which is actually at 120 BPM. All right, let's go over this. While CC2 controls this, this knob gives you just a visual representation of up and down. Now, if the mod wheel is up, seems like it's not working. These are still beta patches, by the way. Everything will be fixed <laughs> in what you guys get. You can still see down here, though. When the mod wheel is up, it plays as risers. And the way this is mapped out is just straight up rips or falls, then one beat, two beats, four beats, and eight beats. Now these are all separate takes. None of these are stretched out. Let's show you what that is. And it's basically stretched out from, not stretched, but recorded and mapped from low to high, low to high, low to high, etc. So rips. And they weren't giving given like like tonal rips, they weren't given a note to land on. They were given a general cluster. That way you get to keep it with the, the aleatoric nature of the library. Now sometimes you'll get where it sounds like they're landing on the same note. That's just player instinct. It happens. Alright. One beat. Two beats. These are four. And these are eight. There you go. Push the mod wheel down and you get the same thing but falls. Also, you'll notice these don't say horns A or horns B. The cluster split, sustains, deviations, and all the falls and rises were recorded with a full ensemble of all six horn players. All right, and also like the low brass, we recorded everything that we have normal. So all these patches that we just went over, we have light versions, which is a full mix. Let me go ahead and bring one up for that. We'll do C flurries. A. Why not? Now these are full mix patches if you're looking for a lighter RAM footprint. <laughs> Again, the cool thing is that's just three horn players with a few, you know, a couple notes laid out. You can always bring in, let's see, flurries, and we'll do horns B, jitters light. We'll use just, you know, two notes here. Ah, sorry. <laughs> let's assign this and we'll be good. Let's see, 13. All 
Awesome. So yeah, those are the light patches. And like I was saying before, just like the low brass module, everything was recorded muted. In this case, in French horns, stopped. All right, let me give you a few examples on that. Let's see, we'll do jitters, why not? So we'll do horn A and B. There you go. Stopped. Sounds like this. Let's get a few more examples in here. Let's see. Uh, flutter bends. Why not? We'll go with horn A, horn B. Awesome, there you have it. I will quickly go over this just in case you don't want to watch the low brass video. But as I said, this controls the random start time, the aleatoric scripting. These are additional filters. And just enable them by clicking here. It'll show you if it's on or off. Again, that'll be fixed. That is supposed to be green. But um, yeah, the point is you can use any custom CC number that you'd like. And if you feel like rolling off a little bit on the highs or the lows, it's at your own discretion. We leave it off by default. You can do whatever you'd like. Well, guys, thank you for checking it out. Until next time.